I'm like, fuck a bail, Jack. Guarantee to get the money regardless of any current predicament. I learned to adapt. I don't know what you boys thought this was. I'm a hundred percent certain it ain't that. If you want me to give you a pat on the back. What's poppin' so lit, fam? Welcome back to the channel, man. This your boy. Trey is so lit, baby, and as always, I got my very beautiful wife in on this reaction. Baby, introduce yourself. And it's your girl, Marisha, so lit. Let's <laughs> do it, gang. So look, man, we ain't even finna hold y'all part three to that Trevor Noah dropping these gems on Charlemagne the God. Let's do it. People of color and African-American representation in media. <laughs> I think you have to break it down into different levels. When looking at black people being represented on screen, Black Americans represented on screen, black people represented on screen. You have to break it down into what's happening behind the camera, what's happening in front of the camera, what's happening in the boardrooms that control the world of cameras. Mm -hmm. Because those are all the pieces that, that define the world that we live in. And I think you can, you can operate with a bit of nuance in this world, which people often don't enjoy because it is more difficult. I think we have to say that as black creatives and as black creators, we have an obligation to our own to create our stories. Facts. And again, it's not about saying, hey, white people, you're excluded. Listen, listen, let me, let me just touch on that game. That was so real as, like he said, as black entertainers, they have an obligation to their own to create their stories. Meaning, I won't let you tell my story for me. Yeah. Because they basically already doing it in the history books and stuff. Remember how, like, okay, for instance, Master P just came out with a new movie, um that he paid for all by himself. Oh, yeah. Um, um, and people was making fun. Oh, it looked like this. It looked like that. But he he I owned that movie. His, his main thing about it was black yeah. leadership. He owned that movie. It was basically about a hood uh -huh. restaurant that was about to go out of business. Uh -huh. Basically, it was just him telling his story from a black perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And people gave him flack for that. But I respect it because he told the story himself. Ain't nobody write the script for him. And he owned everything, got all the profits for it. You know, it yeah. wasn't in movies, but it was, it just, yeah, I, I, I can feel that. I really can. Everything is everything is his, basically. Yeah, everything yeah. is his. So back to what he was saying, as, you know, black entertainers, with a voice, with a platform, it's up to them to tell the story. Don't let, you know, it's up to them to tell the story and don't let, you know, Hollywood tell the story for them. You know That's what I mean? true. Because they got a platform. Yeah. Yeah. It's about saying, no, hey. Let's take pride in telling our stories mm -hmm. the same way for so long Hollywood and its original creators took pride in telling their stories. Mm -hmm. right. Just tell a story. The mm -hmm. other part of it, though, has to acknowledge that there is a gate and there are gatekeepers. And those people have to give you the opportunity. So, you know, in many ways, you can create as much as you want to create. You can, you can work within the parameters that you can work within. But I think Hollywood as a whole you know, from the boardrooms through to the directors and the, and the, and the filmmakers and the writers, etc. They also have to realize that there is an opportunity to grow. You know, for so long, people have made it seem like it's charity. Mm -hmm. Why don't you put black people in your TV show? Wouldn't that be nice? It's not about nice. Think about the opportunity to grow. There's a saturation point. At some point, people have seen... Every white story. Every single white story yeah. out there. Every white story. They've seen it. And then a movie like Black Panther comes and people are like, there's something different about this movie. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something different about it. Yes, sir. You can't put your finger on it? I, I don't know what it is. It was the freshest Marvel movie in a long time. You yeah. really can't put your finger on it? Really? It's full of black people. And I think that's, that's all it is. It's just like finding original stories, you know? And it's, it's the same thing that's happening in Hollywood with, with regards to women. Let women write stories. Let women tell their stories. It doesn't just have to be some guy who's writing a story about like, oh, she was beautiful, but she didn't know it until a guy discovered it for her. Why not just have a woman tell an authentic story? You know, and you see it with beautiful films like Lady Bird, and you see it with beautiful black films written by guys like Ryan Coogler. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you see people like Ava DuVernay pushing storytelling in a different direction. And what you realize is it's not a black movie. It's not a black story. It's a story. Yeah. It's a movie. And there are black people who are the characters in it. And that appeals to anyone. What story are you hoping to convey with your Born a Crime film, based on your book? Well, the hardest thing is, is trying to find a way to distill a book into a movie, because, I mean, we all know the phrase, uh, well, the book was better, yeah. you know? So how do I right. distill 20-odd years into less than two hours? Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be the biggest challenge. Tough. The main thing I think I want to convey in the movie, though, is, is a story. So the key will be figuring out how do I tell the story of a mother and son whose love exists in a world where it shouldn't? And how do I tell the story of a country that is existing 
even though it shouldn't. You know, because in many ways, South Africa is a, is a story of, of impossibilities. A nation where a minority oppressed a majority, and once that majority achieved power, there wasn't a backlash. There wasn't a, a, a rip. Gang, get in the conversation. Let me know exactly what he's talking about when he yeah. said the minority oppressed the majority. You feel me? Then the majority came back into power. Get down below and let us know. You feel me? I want to know all about that. I think I, feel, I got a feeling it's kind of what um, Dr. Khaled Muhammad was talking about, but. Some comments down below would be nice, or either some links to some videos, you feel me? We can get into a lot more stuff like this, you feel me? That strikes dialogue, I like it. Revolution where people were killed. In many ways, it was termed the bloodless revolution. And so how do you tell that story, and how do you tell the story on a, on a, on a macro level as well, where you look at these people, their family, the community and the country that they grew up in, and how it all I guess, culminated in this guy that you're speaking to right now and many people like me living in the world. Is it hard to relinquish control to the writers, being that it's your real life and they might want to just spice it up a little bit? I don't know if you can spice up my life. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would be interested to see how you try and spice it up. I, uh, I only realized how crazy my life was when I wrote the book about my life. Because I, I... I gotta read the book. I gotta... Yeah, I'm, look, definitely. listen. As soon as it's over, I'm buying the book. Yeah, you feel me? Because bro. just off that stand-up... Um, when his mom got shot in the head, just knowing that was real, like, okay, bro, you got a story behind you. I, I want to hear it. You know what yeah, I mean? Definitely. And then hopefully he talk about a lot more of the historical events that was happening or that has happened in South Africa or maybe throughout Africa. Because like he said earlier in the other clips, in certain parts of Africa, in comedy, you still can't like just fully vocally express yourself to stuff exactly. that's going on. Yeah. Around. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, will, I I got to get it. I got to get it. Oh, and no. This is going to be a really good book. Yeah, 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 yeah. The book should be fire. Exactly. And then he tried to put it into a movie. Yeah, Gangster. Definitely. Gangster. Always have thought I just lived my life, mm -hmm. you know? And maybe it's because I grew up in a place where many people had crazy stories. You know, maybe you, you are a similar mm -hmm. person. I mean, I remember reading your book and the things and the people you've met are so crazy. Mm -hmm. But there are people out there who've lived, you know, really just sanitized lives. So to them, your life is crazy. Yeah. But there are many people who'd be like, Charlamagne, what are you talking about? You lived a crazy life. Man, I lived a block away from you. My life was much crazier. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but my life is crazy to other people. Yeah. And so um, I don't think I don't think they'll they'll need to spice it up. Um, and luckily, I'll be I'll be working with them, uh, not against them. So I'm excited. Word, right, Trev. Thanks for but sitting with know, me, my brother. You know yes, what I sir. Like about him is that he's giving you advice, but he's not just giving it to you. He's doing what. He's telling you to do. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said he wanted to make a movie. Yeah, they're not about no action. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So he's definitely doing that. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 definitely. And I'm glad he actually like sat, sat down with Charlemagne. Because Charlemagne, besides all the dumb clips that a lot of people may see of him, I, one thing I always liked about Charlemagne, he was very outspoken and yeah, very honest. You know what I mean? He's a very intelligent brother. You know what I mean? These two sitting down, bro. It's big. Yeah, it's it's really big. So look, man, if y'all enjoyed this, man, get us a thumbs up. Get it in our comment section. Let us know what y'all want to see next until next time, man. It's your boy. Trey is so lit, baby. And it's your girl, Marisha, so lit. We'll catch y'all next video, gang.